and 2020. The word comes to us from St. Luke's Gospel, the first chapter, verses 26 to 38, favored by God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Greetings, O favored ones. The Lord is with you. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, and, as I may remind you, only 96 hours away, this Christmas there is a word for you. The word is from the Lord, and it is straightforward. You, you dear people of God, are favored by God. You have received this favor of God not because you are rich or because you are poor. You have received this favor of God not because you're nice or because you've done all sorts of good things or that you've limited your cookie consumption this December. You are favored by God. And to help us understand this good news of God's favor towards you, we need to look to Mary in our gospel lesson that we just heard read moments ago. And we ask, why did God choose Mary? When the angel Gabriel announced God's favor upon her, St. Luke tells us that she was perplexed, that she was greatly troubled, and she was trying to figure out what kind of news this could be. What kind of, what kind of news was this angel bringing to her? Do not be afraid, the angel Gabriel says to Mary. And of course, when you hear those words, do not be afraid, which will be repeated by our Lord again and again throughout the Gospels, do not be afraid, you know that something good is going to come next. Indeed, this angel, this preacher, if you will, delivers good news to Mary. And not only that, he calls her by name. That is, that God's favor is not just in a general fashion, of course that's part of it, but God's favor upon his people is personal. He calls Mary by her name. Why did God choose Mary? Was it that she was holy on her own? Did she do something in order to get God's notice? No. God chose her. God chose Mary because God is God. And He is sovereign. And God sent this preacher to her to bring a word. Not a word of condemnation or vengeance as we sinners would expect. It. But instead... Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And Mary would have known what that name Jesus was all about. That name signifies the one who saves, the one who rescues, the one who redeems. He will be great, the angel says to her. And he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And as we heard from 2 Samuel there, that throne of David goes on forever. That was a promise made by God years and years and hundreds of years before Jesus, before the coming of Jesus at Christmas. And here we have God keeping his promise made to King David so long ago that his line goes on forever. And indeed, it has and is in Jesus. The angel goes on to Mary. This one that you are bearing will reign over the house of Jacob uh, and um, forever. And his kingdom, there will be no end. This is a promise by God. And we see how this all plays out. We, we are the recipients of, of the Gospels. We have it all in front of us. We have the whole story. And of course, in that moment, Mary just had part of it. And so the angel Gabriel reveals to Mary this overwhelming good news, the best news ever. And the same is true for you, dear saints. If 
you people of God. God has a word for you too. You are favored by God. Not because you are holy on your own and not because you've done this or that or or kept some sort of strict diet and you have it all together. No, it's the exact opposite. Jesus comes to save sinners. To people who don't have it together. To people who eat too many cookies in December. To people who do terrible things. Jesus comes to them. It is Jesus who is the one who saves, the one who redeems, the one who rescues. Sinners like you and me in Jesus, we have found favor with God. Because it is Jesus who comes to rescue us and and to redeem us, not with gold or silver as the catechism says, but with his holy precious blood to save us and to reconcile us all to God. So God has sent a preacher your way. A preacher whose main job is this. To declare to you God's favor. By forgiving you all your sins in the holy name of Jesus. Whose main job is this as a preacher among you. To declare to you God's favor by announcing to each of you the death of death. By Jesus' glorious resurrection at Easter. By his death and resurrection then, you are all recipients of God's ultimate favor. And all of this, all of God's favor was bestowed upon you, given to you in your baptism. There out of that watery tomb, you were raised a new life. Risen with Jesus. Consequently, then, you dear Christians, you echo those those most famous words of Mary. Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And lest any of you think that your sins are too great to be forgiven. That somehow you are beyond God's grace in Jesus Christ. Hear me right now. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. You are indeed forgiven in Jesus Christ. All of you. You belong to him and he belongs to you. And nothing can separate you, not even death. Jesus comes to us at Christmas to save us. And so doing gives to us an enduring hope. A sure and certain hope that in the end, Jesus gets the last word. Always. A word of victory and resurrection. A word of joy and peace, no matter the circumstances. And so giving this to us, we know with all certainty that God is indeed good. And that God in Jesus favors each one of us. On this fourth Sunday of Advent in 2020 and forever. Do not be afraid, dear saints. Lord is with you. In the name of Jesus, amen.